Hey dudes, Jude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about command line arguments processing. Uh, first things first, I want to give a big thank you to Phage Kai, who made a donation to the channel. Um, I really appreciate it, and um, if anybody else wants to pitch in and help out making th this type of, of learning content, You'll find the link in the description and in the channel homepage. So, Phage Kai, thank you very much. Command line argument processing is a really important part of uh, developing tools, command line tools, which has grown in popularity uh, recently with systems programming languages. And in Zig, you have uh, several options. First, we're going to be taking a look at uh, how to do it with just the Zig standard library. Uh, we have the first case is when you're not targeting uh, the Windows platform Pretty much any other platform you can obtain an iterator over the uh, command line arguments passed in via uh, the stud process args uh, function call and that will return uh, an iterator over each of the arguments and it's important to note that the first one of those arguments is going to be the, the actual program name itself. And this iterator doesn't need any type of allocator. Um, when, when we see uh, further down in the case of Windows, you will need an allocator for, for its command line arguments processing. So if you're going to be doing uh, multi-platform uh, programming, which will include the Windows platform, you will need an allocator, but uh, in all other cases, you can use this uh, args iterator from stud process args. And once you have that, you can start uh, using the next method. The next method will return an optional string, an optional slice of const u8. And um, I'm using here next with the question mark operator here because we know that at least we have to have this first um, argument which is going to be the name of the program itself and I'm printing it here in this message and then for the rest um, I'm pretty much looping over with a while loop in its optional modality here it's going to be uh, calling the next method um, of this args iterator until it reaches a null which means that there are no more args and then uh, we capture here the arg, we increment our counter, and we print out a message with the argument number and the string argument itself. So basically with uh, these types of argument iterators, all you obtain are the string version of those arguments passed in the, in the command line. If you want to do any processing, any type of processing, you have to do it yourself. Um, you have to process those strings. If you want to, uh, you have to convert them to numbers, or if you you want to treat them differently, if it's a short um, flag type of parameter with a dash or or a long name with double dash, things like that. All that processing you have to do it yourself. All that parsing and processing of the arg of the arguments. Basically, what these iterators uh, provide is just uh, a mechanism to obtain those arguments that were passed in. Pretty much like in C, um, that the main function receives uh, the, the count of how many arguments and an array of the arguments. Well, these iterators uh, pretty much provide that same functionality. In the case of Windows, as I mentioned, we're going to be needing an allocator. And here, to uh, mix things up a little, instead of using the general purpose allocator as we usually do, I wanted to uh, demonstrate how to use a fixed buffer allocator in this case. You could use any other allocator, uh, like the general purpose allocator. But I just wanted to show a little different uh, an, an example here. I'm creating here an array of 1024 bytes. And I'm um, creating here an instance of the fixed buffer allocator. Based on that array, I'm passing in a pointer to the array, which will be coerced to a slice of, of bytes. And here I am then calling the allocator method to obtain the actual allocator instance from the fixed buffer allocator. 
And as you can see, I don't have to call the init on the fixed buffer allocator because we are dealing with stack memory. We're not we're not real we're not really allocating on the heap. So once main finishes and its stack frame is removed, this memory will be cleaned up automatically. Okay. Now we'll see an example of using uh, the actual al uh, args uh, iterator with an allocator. This time we're calling process args with allocator and passing in our allocator instance. And what that returns is pretty much uh, an args iterator, just like in the case of args. But this time you have to remember to call the init on this instance of this iterator because it is allocating and you have to free the resources. Okay. Now here, pretty much the, 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 the functionality is just the same as we did before. The, the first um, item in that iterator is going to be the, the binary itself. And then we can use a while loop to iterate over any other uh, existing arguments, just like we did before. And now that's pretty much what, what you have available in the standard library of Zig to handle command line arguments. We're going to take a look at uh, a package from the ecosystem. It's called ZigClap, and it's a very powerful command line argument processor. And uh, here we have an example of why it's it's such a powerful processor. It has a parser that can parse basically the help message that you usually find in command line tools. You provide the text um, here uh, via a multi-line string. This is a multi-line string. This is, this is a sole parameter that we're passing into this function. And we can format it like this as a multi-line string, which basically has the structure of that help message that we usually see when we uh, request help from a command line utility. And uh, uh, ZigClap will handle uh, interpreting this, the shorthand uh, flags that we can pass, the, the long names here, versions of those flags, as you can see. And it'll handle also the conversion to uh, native zig types, depending on what we're dealing with. Here, as you can see, it says u size here. So basically, um, this number uh, argument, it's originally a string when passed in, but clap will handle converting it to a u size. Okay. And here, a string. And we have the three dots here, which means that this uh, particular command line uh, argument can be repeated. So we'll basically receive a slice of these strings. And in uh, the case of um, arguments that don't have uh, a shorthand or, or long name with, two, with dashes, those are known as positional arguments. And here we're basically saying that we're going to have uh, more than one positional argument of type string. So let's take a look at what we have to do to parse that. We're going to be calling here the parse function uh, from our clap namespace that we imported. And we specify here that we're going to be using the default clap parser. Um, we can define our own uh, parsers in clap. I encourage you to check out their readme and their, their examples in the GitHub repo. And uh, here we're specifying the allocator that we're going to be using because since it's going to be parsing uh, the, the text and converting, uh, it will need to allocate. And here, in case of any error in that process of parsing, we're going to be calling the help uh, function. And with this, when we get an error, we're going we're gonna to be uh, um, uh, obtaining on the screen the helpful help message and we're going to be seeing that in a moment and once we've done the parsing we have to remember to uh, call the init when we're finished on that result because it's going to be allocating and now if everything uh, has been parsed successfully uh, we're going to have in that result uh, a series of fields that are basically the different uh, command line arguments that we have defined. Here, as you can see, uh, we have the args field and we're uh, accessing help. So we're basically um, 
a checking here if if help is not zero it means that it was set and then what we do is once again call the help function from clap in the case of uh, the number it was uh, specifically uh, a single number uh, argument this will be converted to a u size as i mentioned if you want to uh, convert to other types of, of, of numeric types you can uh, define your own uh, parser uh, you'll find an example of that in the in the GitHub repo, as I mentioned. Here we're printing out that number. Um, the uh, string uh, argument uh, accepted one or more strings, so we can iterate with a for loop and capture each one of those strings. And here, as you can see, we're using the S format specifier because indeed each one of those was was processed as a string. And uh, the remaining, uh, the positional arguments are going to be all in this uh, positionals field. And um, we can iterate over them with a for loop, capture them, and print them out as strings. So let's move on over here to the terminal. Um, if we do a zig build run 1-n42, you'll see that we get the help message for zig build and that's because we're passing the arguments to zig build itself when we we actually want to pa pass these command line arguments to the binary that we're going to generate we can do that with the double dashes here uh, what this means that anything after these two dashes is going to be passed in to the generated binary so here we have a position of one we have uh, this parameter dash n which is a number um, let's use the shorthand here, the string, hello, and the long one, string, world. And let's add here another positional. And as you can see, the non-allocating iterator will give us the full path of the binary and all of these command line arguments just like strings. Um, there's no special processing here. Uh, the allocating version that you can use on Windows. Here's the binary, the full path, and exactly the same uh, treatment of all of the arguments, just like uh, they're just strings. No special processing there. And zigclap does uh, the special processing. We have that number that we passed. It treats it as a number, 42. Uh, the strings, we have both, we used uh, the shorthand and the long, and it did identify them as that uh, parameter that can be specified multiple times and the two positionals one and two which were spread out as you can see we have one here at the beginning and two at the end and it still uh, identified them okay now we can also use that with the generated binary directly let's go to zig out bin okay now we have here the generated binary so we're going to be using those same parameters and we get exactly the same output and if once again we use the binary and with death dash h we're going to see the helpful uh, help message display you can also get that with the long version okay and if you pass in an unknown an unknown um, argument that you didn't define we uh, configured it so it'll display once again that same help message okay so with that, that's pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate. Um, you have to keep in mind that when you do use the standard library arguments uh, iterators, uh, there is no special processing of, of flags or anything like that. They're just strings and you have to process them yourself. If you want a, a, a powerful uh, command line args processor that's already uh, handling all that for you, you can use the clap. There are others in the ecosystem. You, you can uh, check, uh, do a search and you'll find others. I just uh, demonstrated ZigClap because it seems to be one of the most popular ones in the ecosystem. So I hope you find this useful. Dude the Builder here. I'll see you in the next one.